Bit Hollis is being introduced. This is the championship game of the Hol of the Best of the Southwest Tournament from Granite, Oklahoma, December 10th, 1988. I, uh, I'm running a camera and talking, so Arvold, you're gonna you're gonna have to do it on these Hollis players for a little while. I don't know them. The Granite Panthers. Steve Gable being introduced. Jerome Murray, Justin James being introduced. Robin Carney, our three-point shooter. Todd Brooks, the big center for Granite, the Granite Panthers. We'll give the line up for Hollis. All right, we, for the Hollis Tigers, starting tonight will be number 15, David Dugan, number 23, Rhett Butler, 45, Sean Gorman, number 10 is Alvin Dixon, number 13, Mark Mitchell. For the Granite Panthers, we have Steve Gable, number 25, Jerome Murray, number 50, Justin James, number 42, Todd Brooks is 55, Robin Carney, number 32. We got two fine teams on the field tonight, Ronnie. I look for a heated up ball game. Okay, we're ready to jump it. Be uh, Robin Carney jumping for uh, Granite. Tip control by Hollis. Hollis passing the ball around. Zone defense by Granite. Hollis is not going to shoot as fast as uh, other teams against us, Orville. Big boy in. And there's a shot up and in. In the corner to Gable. And James. And a, and a steal. Up and in. Granite's behind by four. Turnover results in a layup by Rhett Butler of Hollis. So Hollis has jumped out to a 4 0 lead. Number 15, David Dugan draws the first foul of the game. Not a shooting foul, there'll be no free shots. Is absolutely awesome, Ronnie. Last night, Gable shot six of nine for 66% from the field. Scored 16 points. I hope he can keep the pace tonight. Robin Carney misses his first three-point attempt. It looks like to me Hollis is going to try to run a deliberate ball game. Number 23, Rhett Butler makes the move. It's off, but he gets his own rebound and still off. 45 finally takes it home on the third, the third attempt. Number 45, Sean Gorman is a senior, but a 6'7 senior. Gable puts it up and it's in.
Hollis lead is two. This game's taking shape to be a match point game, Ronnie, and I think it can be a lot of action in a game like that. Jerome Murray nearly makes a steal. Jerome Murray gets the rebound. Good hustle. Number 50, Jerome Murray on the rebound. Jerome puts it up, it's off. Hollis controls the rebound. Mark Mitchell brings the ball up court for the Hollis Tigers. Air ball. Granite gets a break and will control the ball on the turnaround. Gable gets the ball inbounds back to James. And they turn the ball over. Harlow, we're not playing as good as we did last night. Maybe we'll get started, though. Foul on the big boy, number I think. 45 draws a foul over the back of Todd Brooks. Gable just takes it all the way home into Todd Brooks. He fakes, it's up, and it's good. It's good. Working against the 6'7", Sean Gorman. Todd Brooks got a chance for a three-point play. He was fouled on the shot. Number 45 picks up his second personal. So Todd Brooks has a chance to go the line for three-point and completes it for the three-point play, Ronnie. Granite leads seven to six. Granite's got an excellent balance in their scoring. Four players were grouped around 15 points last night. 45, Gorman with the ball back to Dugan. And a turnover. And Hollis turns the ball over. 3.31 to go in the first quarter. James to Carney on the inbounds pass. Back to Gable, and it's cross midline. Gable's going to take it in, put it up, and it is good. Gable with his third shot. That's three for three with six points in the first quarter. Mitchell for the Tigers to Rhett Butler. Alvin Dixon will put up a shot. It's no good. Todd Brooks with a rebound. Out to Jerome Murray. Hands it over to Gable. And Granite turns the ball over, but Carney steals it and it's up and it's another two points by Robin Carney. A good alert play resulted in a steal and it's two points for Robin Carney as he enters the scoring ledger for the first time in this game. Mitchell to Gorman and that's off. But Robin Carney will draw the foul as he uh, attempted to bat the ball away. Reaching in on Gorman. He'll go the line. Robin Carney has the first personal for Granite tonight. And it's up and in. Second shot, and it's as good as well. Granite's got 11 to 8 lead. Justin James with the ball to back to Jerome. Gable's got it up front, makes a move, puts it over to Jerome, and it's in there. Nice assist, Steve Gable. Jerome Murray picks up his first goal of the night. 23, Red Butler 
That'll be a two-point shot. It was near the three-point line, but it's a two-point goal by Rhett Butler. Oh, dangerous cross-court pass, but he gets it down. Gable puts it up, and it's in. That's the best way in the world to break the, to break the get, press when you can take the ball down and victimize them with two, Ronnie. That one, good well, bounce. They've been able to break the press each time Red Butler makes a move, puts the ball in to Gorman. He back out, back out to Mitchell for the Tigers. Back the corner to Butler. He puts the ball up, and it's off. Robin Carney with the rebound. Brings the ball down court and back to Steve Gable. Steve Gable will take the point. Down on the wing to Justin. Over to Jerome. A good pass play inside. The ball comes out, but Steve Gable controls. He takes it down. Justin James on the wing puts it up. It's off. Mitchell snags the rebound for the Tigers, and he'll bring the ball down the floor. All right, well, there's 50 seconds left in the first quarter. Granted, leads by five. Gorman puts it up, and it's, uh, I believe, I believe they call number 32, Robin Carney, reaching in. That'll be his second personal in the first quarter. So Sean Gorman will go the line with a chance to make two at the free throw line, Ronnie. It's up and it's good. Uh, Gorman is three for three at the line thus far this evening. He puts his fourth shot up. It's good. But they weren't going to count it. Someone was in the lane. Oh. Hollis was in the lane too quick. Hollis was in the lane, negates the, the point. Gable across the line draws a foul. Be number 15 for the Tigers. That will be David Dugan. That'll be his second foul tonight in the first quarter. Back to Gable. He stops, pumps it up. It's no good. No red shirts. Number 24, Bale, for the Tigers will get the rebound. Mitchell with the ball. Over to Dugan. Rhett Butler on the wing, makes a move, puts it up. No score. 5-0, Jerome Murray will draw the foul. We got 13 seconds and Granite holds a four point lead, Orville. We're gonna have a lead at the end of the first quarter, I believe. And the ball's still on the floor. Todd Brooks controls the rebound. All right, way to hustle. All right, the inbound pass to Justin James ends the first quarter, Granite's in the lead at the end of one quarter of play, 15 to 11. Gables had another strong start in this game, eight points at the end of the quarter. Jerome Murray's two. Todd Brooks, three point play, gives him three. Robin Carney's two. At the end of one play, quarter of play, Granite leads 15 to 11. Arnold, you're doing a great job. I tell you what, it's all I can do to run this camera. I might say a word every once in a while. Well, I'm, I'm enthused, Ronnie. These Granite boys uh, have come out this year and uh, just shown a lot of good ball sense and a lot of hustle and a lot of enthusiasm. And they're 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 turning it on. This is uh, the community's becoming excited about looking down the road the playoffs and wondering where Granite might go. That's right. And uh, Orville, I want to make mention of the fact we got a tremendously large crowd here tonight for all of these games of the tournament. We've had some close ones. Two of the girls' games were in overtime today. Granite will come out in the second quarter with their starting lineup of Gable, Murray, James, Brooks, and Carney. And the turnover, Red Butler's got the ball. He walks, but it's not called. 45 Gorman control. Yeah! Hey, yeah, yeah! It's late, 
but referee George O makes the call, traveling with the ball. Granite will get the ball on the turnover. Justin James to bring the ball in bounds. And it's in to number 50, Jerome Murray crossed the line. Robin Carney puts it up and it is off. But I, no, they say that Gable tapped the ball out of bounds. So Hollis will get possession of the ball. 13, Mark Mitchell will bring it downfield, down court for the uh, Tigers. Over to Bell. Uh, Granite nearly forced the turnover and Gable come through. I. Uh, Picky picky foul. Number 25. Oh, well, I don't. Gable picks up his first personal of the night. I I thought that call could have gone the other way pretty easy. Yeah, right? sure could. Good hustle. They're trying to deny. Oh, what a hustle. That'll. Grant, Jerome Murray out of bounds. This is the turnover by just staying with them and. Gable bringing the ball down court. Oh, cross court pass, but Jerome Murray stays with it. Sp slaps the ball over to John Whitehead to control the possession for the Panthers. The ball's to Jerome Murray. John Whitehead puts it up and it's gonna be in and out. In and out. 13, Mitchell. Gorman with the rebound. Mitchell bringing the ball down field for the, down court for the Tigers. Bell with the ball. We've got a new player in, that would be 20, that's uh, Means. I don't have a first name. 55, Todd Brooks battles and comes up with the rebound. Gable bringing the ball down court. Justin James on the wing. A strong defensive pressure by the Tigers there with them every minute. The ball's turned over. Had some bad passes there. Be Granite's ball. Uh, Ronnie, I, I hope this game opens up a little bit. As a rule, Granite plays better when the pace picks up. John Whitehead snares the rebound. We played a minute and hadn't scored this quarter, Orville. Jerome Murray puts up the shot, and it's all in and out. Need to follow that shot and pick up a rebound. Number 20, that'll be Means with the ball. Back to Mitchell. Alvin Dixon for the Tigers. Means will put up a shot and it's in. A 15-13 ball game. John Whitehead to Jerome Murray Gable with the ball and he puts it up and it's gonna be in and out. 45 Gorman using that 6-7 height real well control the rebound. Bell's putting the ball up. John Whitehead controls the rebound and brings it out to Gable who'll bring it down downfield, down court. I've got football on my brain, Ronnie. I keep calling this court a field here. Right. Gable with the ball over Jerome Murray, whips it around to the wing. Justin James into Whitehead. Gorman rejects the pass, rejects the shot. And yes, that'll be a foul, number 45. That's his third personal, Ronnie. They're gonna have to consider his foul situation, they do. Is that three on him? 45 Gorman will be taken out of the game, picking up his third personal foul at midway point of the second quarter. Justin James goes to the line, opportunity for two points. In and out. He hit him last night, Orville. We're just not hitting as good as we did last night. 
Well, uh, it'd be hard to maintain the percentage they hit last night every game, Ronnie, but that was up and in. That's our first point of this quarter with 4.36 to go in the half. Justin James picks up his first point of the game. Means with the ball. Dixon to Mitchell, back to Means. He'll pop it up. And it's in and out, but there's going to be a reaching in foul. Bell will draw a personal foul. It'll be a one and one shot. I believe we'll be seeing uh, John Whitehead go to the line for the, for the Panthers. His uh, first free throw opportunity of the night. He puts it up, and it's no good. I haven't had a little camera problem here shaking it around. Means with the ball. Bell rebounded for the Tigers. Makes a move inside, and he can Makes a strong move against the Granite defense on the, in, on the layup. Good ball handling. Gable puts it up, and it's in and out. Whitehead puts it back, and it's in there. I don't and it will not count. count. Whitehead rebound and re, rebound and put the ball back up, but we get a personal foul. Number 13, which will be Mitchell, his first personal of the night. Whitehead puts the ball up and it's good. It's his second shot and it's good. The Panthers are hitting their free throws this year, Ronnie. It can make an incredible amount of difference that's the difference in any close game. That's what right. you do at the line. That's exactly right. They're hitting. Bell them. to Dixon. He puts it up, and it's going to fall in. There's a turnover. Johnny Whitehead stepped out of bounds before he threw it. Stepped in bound. And Coach Tony Dillingham for the Panthers wants to talk it over. He calls a timeout with 3:39 left to play in the first half. Granite still maintaining the lead, 18 to 17. Uh, I'd like to see this game pick up pace, Ronnie. I just think that uh, right now the, the Panthers are playing a little more deliberate game trying to hold the, or the Tigers are playing a deliberate game trying to keep the Panthers from getting hot. But they're shooting, Panthers are shooting real well from the field tonight. Yeah, uh, although I think if we could get started here that we can uh, play better ball than we're playing right now. We just can't seem to get it going. Thirteen Mitchell for the Tigers to Means. And he puts it over to Dixon. Me. And uh, there's a turnover by Hollis. That's gonna help. Zero Bernard turns the ball over. Justin James will inbound it here. Granite leads is one. Gable just takes it down court. They just. No, oh, great individual effort. As Gable prevented the turnover. Well, we're, look we're really looking sloppy here. Well, this defensive pressure, Hollis is using that quick team they've got to harass the uh, Panthers, and it's paying off for them. They've held the Panthers to three points this quarter. Whitehead with the rebound. Jerome Murray handling the ball. Gables on the point will take charge of the ball game. Over to Justin James on the wing. And... Uh, the ball is rejected by Red Butler, slaps it away. They attempting to get the ball into Todd Brooks for a post. Means Mitchell and Bell puts up the shot. John rebound. John Whitehead with the rebound. Getting excited, can't talk. John Whitehead has come in and put up a strong defensive game. 
Red Butler again rejects the uh, post pass to Todd Brooks. We're having trouble getting it into Todd Arville. We need to hit, try to get it into him. Right now, I think uh, Red Butler's getting by with reaching over the back. I, I feel like eventually they're, oh, telegraphed the play. Gable telegraphed the pass and uh, 24 Bell was waiting on it, nearly pulled the interception. Gable puts it up and it's off. It's bad off. Desperation shot, Ronnie. Yeah, that wasn't a good shot at all. Not a good selection of shot. Well, they're letting Hollis at this at this time, Hollis Tigers are putting Granite off their game. They're ha harassing them defensively. Red Butler, Hollis rebound takes and turn around jumper, puts Hollis, it down. Hollis, Hollis takes, takes the, lead. the lead again. First time since early in the game. I missed that play. I was watching the ball game. Since I missed it, we just threw it and out of bound and uh, Todd Brooks touched it last. Mitchell with the ball for the Hollis Tigers. Over to Means. Means will inbound the ball for the Tigers. Dixon to Mitchell. Mitchell back to Dixon. Mitchell to Red Butler, he'll air it out. Back to Means. Means puts it up and it's air ball. Oh, but Red Butler hustles, saves the out of bounds pass. Get him. Come on, Red. They were all over him and they, we couldn't get the whistle. We need to thank offense. We've gone dead offensively three points this quarter, all of them at the free throw line. We need to get it in to Todd. I, I guess they're gonna hold it for one with 25 seconds. Good, strong move and draws the foul. Justin Number 42, Justin James on the layup and draws the foul. He'll go the line. Number 20 draws his first personal of the evening. Give Justin James an opportunity to make two points at the line. He again misses his first shot. Uh, James shoots, it's up, and it's in. Again, misses the first one and converts the second we're, free throw opportunity. We're tied at 19 with 13 seconds to go. I believe that was a foul the other way. Yeah, I think he missed it that time. They call a foul on 50. With Jerome one second. Murray. There's one second to go in the half. And number 10 was riding his back, so I definitely think they missed that call. It's up and it's no good. So the half will end tied at 19. Or, well, uh, we're supposed to go over here. We're going to say hello to June Shields. She's going to be watching this tape. We're going to zoom in. Uh, we're going to zoom in right behind. And uh, hello, June. This is Ronnie. We got some friends over here that want to say hi to you. There's some of them waving at you. There they are. There's some of your friends, June. There's Linda Morris and uh, let's see who all is at over there. Calhoun, there's uh, Jeanette Litton.
Got any statistics, Orville? We're not doing much, but uh, how's our scoring going? At this point of the game, Steve Gable leads Granite scoring with eight points, and uh, Todd Brooks has three. And Jerome Murray, Justin James, Robin Carney, and John Whitehead have two each. So the score is still balanced, but it's sure not as pretty to look at as it was last night, Ronnie. Uh, at halftime last night, we uh, saw Gable with six, Jerome Murray with two, Justin James eight, Todd Brooks had 10, and Robin Carney had 12. So we had quite a different scoring situation at half last night. Of course, it's a different ball game. They're playing a different pace. Hollis Tigers have slowed the game down to real deliberate play. And uh, I, think, I think Granite players uh, have shown a tendency to to play real well, just reflect it, it reflects it. Okay, Orville, uh, I've been shooting some of the crowd over there. Uh, got a lot of granite people here. We'll uh, catch the second half in just a moment. We're on. For Ronnie James again with Orville Locklear, second half action from Best of the Southwest Tournament, 1988, Granite. Panthers and the Hollis Tigers. The girls game earlier, fine ball game in overtime. Sayer defeated uh, Hobart Kittens. Go ahead, Orville. Ronnie, Granite's working here for the uh, an opportunity to, they're in the finals, the first chance they've had to win this tournament in some time. The last time Granite Panthers won this title, I believe you said was 1970. That was a team that went on to the uh, semifinals of the state tournament. Well, so we've had a chance to win it in the past. We've, during the middle 70s, and I remember in 82, we went to the finals of the tournament and got beat. So uh, we need to win one. It looks like Hollis has started with their starting lineup again of Butler, Dixon, Gorman, Mitchell, and Dugan. And Granite is starting with their starting lineup of Gable, Murray, James, Brooks, and Carney. Hollis can take the lead here, and they do. And it's off, oh, but they battle for the rebound and push the ball out of bounds. That foul was uh, on Todd Brooks, his first personal of the game. And he's open, he'll put it up. That was Mitchell, but it's out. Todd Brooks controls the rebound, brings the ball out. Jerome Murray will bring it on down court. It's a miss. Yes! Reaching over, number 45, that's Sean Gorman for the Hollis Tigers, will draw his fourth personal as this ball game's open, so foul problems has uh, rendered him very ineffective. That 6-7 height, is, that's a bonus for granted. It's hard to overcome that sort of height advantage. It will kind of piled up over in the corner, but Gable brings it back out over to Robin Carney. Robin unable to put up a shot back to Robin. He puts it up and it's going to be off again. Robin's not hitting tonight. Robin was five for five last night on the three pointers, but he can't get them to go down for him tonight. 24. Mitchell back to Bell. He puts a shot up. It's no good, but he gets his own rebound and then it won't go down. 
Justin James misses the opportunity to get possession. Rhett Butler's got the ball. He drives in, and it's off. And Jerome Murray will be called for moving under. Jerome Murray draws the personal foul. It's be his third personal in the opening moments of this third quarter. John Whitehead, it's too late to get him in the ball game. Mitchell with the ball for the Tigers. Back to Dixon, over to Dugan. Mitchell with the ball. Dugan back to Dixon. Dugan will put it up and it's a misses. But Rhett Butler controls the rebound and makes the bucket for the Tigers. Jerome Murray bringing the ball down court and he whips it up, up court to Gable. Stops at three point line. Over to James on the wing. Jerome Murray on the baseline. Back to Gable. He pumps it up and it goes. That's three point shot for Steve Gable. His opening shot of the third quarter counts for three. Puts Granite back in a tie ball game with the Hollis Tigers as they match points. Dixon with the ball for the Tigers. Over to Mitchell. Dixon again. Mitchell. Dixon. Rhett Butler on the turnaround jumper. It won't go. Robin Carney grabs the rebound. Controls the ball for the Panthers. Robin brings the ball down court over to Gable. He pumps up a three-pointer and it won't go, but Justin James and he'll draw the foul. Rhett Butler will commits his first personal of the game. It will not be a shooting foul, but Granite will uh, retain possession of the ball. Oh, well, I thought he was shooting. I don't get no, it. No, it was not a shooting foul. It was on the rebound. Todd Brooks puts it up. It was off balance, and it won't go, but Gable rebounds and puts the shot up, but he's fouled. So Gable will go the line on a two-shot foul. The personal foul will be against number 15. That will be David Dugan, his third personal of this ball game. Gable with this kind of unorthodox shot is moving free shot. It's up and it's no good. You remember when they in the NBA used to have three to make two, Ronnie? Yeah, I sure do. Got, and Todd Brooks What's rebounds. It? Nice shot. Oh, Granite gets a break as Todd Brooks rebounds and puts the ball back up for two points. And oh, yes. Oh, no. A good move by Robin Carney to deflect the ball, but Justin James was there, but was not able to control it. So Means will bring the ball on into play for the Tigers over to Dugan. He pumps it up. It's good. And it's stolen by Bell over to Means. Turnover by the Panthers. Dugan pumps it up again. It's good again. He's found, he's found a hot spot. Gable nearly lose the ball, but he back to Gable over across the timeline to John Whitehead back to Gable. Granite still in possession of the ball. 26-24 lead by the Hollis Tigers. Gable with the ball. He drives, makes a move, pumps it up, and it's no good. No red shirts on the left side of the goal, so Hollis Tigers with the rebound, bring the ball down court. Means back to Dugan, he's had a hot hand. Dugan moving the ball, it'll be back to Means. Bell for the Tigers. Means back on the point for the Tigers. They'll bring it down the wing to Dugan, back to Means, he'll pump it up. The whistle, we have five seconds in the lane, three seconds in the lane. A three-second lane violation will turn the ball over. I thought we had a new rule, five seconds in the lane. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I kind of make my own up sometimes when I get excited, Ronnie. <laughs> You're just going to have to take it as I dish it out. And Gable, Brown to Jerome, we got a chance to pump it up, and it's 
in and out. We just didn't have enough red shirts around the goal to suit me that time. Dixon means. Robin Carney steals the ball. It's going to be a race. Robin Carney lays it up, a steal and a layup. So for Robin Carney, puts Granny back in the game, 26 points. There's a blocking foul on Todd. Number 55 for Granite draws his second personal game for blocking. Oh, well, there's 2.38 to go in the third quarter, and we still can't pull away. It's tied at 26. The shot is up by Dugan. 24. Bell follows with the rebound with the shot and makes it and steals the ball. Another turnover by the Granite Panthers. They're getting a little erratic with their ball handling, Ron. It's costing us. Rhett Butler makes the drive and uh, Red Butler fires him up. Ronnie, he's a good emotional player. He gets the Hollis boys fired up and ready to play. He'll go to the line, number 32, Drew the personal. And it's up and it's in. Red Butler at the line, his second shot is up and it's no good. And Robin Carney with the rebound for the Panthers. He puts up a shot and it's an air ball. Robin Carney was uh, pointing out a foul to the ref, but the foul, the whistle was not coming, so Hollis Tigers control the ball. Oh, good, oh. A good deflection. Todd Brooks staying with them results in a turnover. The Panthers will control the ball. Steve Gable across the timeline for the Panthers and he takes it up and it's, he's hammered by number 23, hammered again by number 10. Gable will go the line for two shot foul, number 10 will draw the foul. He was hammered twice. Number 23, Rhett Butler hammered him the first time, denied him the shot, and then uh, they came back. Number 10 will draw the foul. And Gable is not able to find the range. He puts it up and it's finally in, Ronnie. So the Panthers will try the press, but they bring it down court. It's Bell puts it up. It's no good. Todd Brooks controls the rebound. Panthers in possession of the ball. And tries the down court pass. Red Butler all the way, coast to coast, and that's two. Red Butler steals the ball, takes it coast to coast. Hollis again, turnover by the Panthers. Coach Dillingham will call timeout, see if he can't, can't calm the Panthers down. They're just getting erratic right in this uh, crucial part of the game. Yeah, trail by four, Arville. That's the most we've been behind, I believe. We've been behind by three, two or three times. But uh, we trail 27 to 31. Arl seen we nearly played three quarters and we scored 27 points. Uh, in the first game of this tournament, we scored 34 points in one quarter against Sayre. Well, we've had several 30-point quarters this, this season, Ronnie. Uh, ordinarily, we, we scored a clip 20 to 25 points in the third quarter. Our third quarters are ordinarily our most productive quarters, and they run anywhere from 20 to 30 points. Hollis will inbound. Yeah, 
Mitchell with the ball for the Hollis Tigers. Justin James harassing, but he reaches in. Five second violation. Are we on? Can you hear me? We're on. Justin James inbound pass. Steve Gable with the ball. They'll pressure him, but he reverses field and Good move by John Whitehead. It's going to count. I do believe they'll count it for 2.5. They count the bucket. All right, well, I'm, I missed that. I had my camera. They button. count the bucket. We've got a chance for a three-point play. I'm John sorry. Whitehead on a strong move. I'm sorry I missed that, Johnny. I just got excited. He, uh, Johnny drove nicely for it and turned and put it in. Completes and the three-point. And he completes. For 30, the second 31. time tonight, the Panthers complete the three-point play. Todd Brooks just holds the rebound in. Steve Gable crossed the coast. He stops, pumps it up, and it's going to be in. The lead again. Panthers. Car forcing the turnovers for the Tigers right now. We're going to put the game more back in perspective here, Ronnie. We're in a man for man. That's speeding up our team, I believe, a little bit. And the shot by Mitchell is no good, so the quarter ends. Granite has regained the lead, now leads this game 32 to 31. family over there. There's my wife Barbara and Jody, Erica, John and Teresa, and there's Jimmy Whitehead. I better get back here at the ball game. Yeah, you better get back. Granite continues. Uh, John Whitehead is playing in the place of Robin Carney is the only exception to the Granite starting lineup for the fourth and final quarter of this ball game. Steve Gable with the ball, a pass off to Jerome Murray, back to Gable. He pumps it up and it's no good. Uh, they're gonna call a foul on number 42, Justin James, reaching in. That's James. Justin commits his first foul of this, of this ball game early in the fourth quarter. Number 15, that'll be David Dugan, will go to the line for the Tigers. He puts it up. It's off, but Justin James will be in the lane, I believe, too quick, Ronnie. I think he pointed at Johnny Whitehead. It was okay, I couldn't see. I didn't see it. I just. He missed it again. Oh, he missed again. And Todd Brooks, Todd Brooks is playing one great ball game on the boards, Ronnie. Justin James tries to penetrate, it's turned away. Steve Gable back to James. Gable over to Whitehead and oh, good pass to Jerome Murray. Back to Gable, down to Whitehead. He pumps it up and it's in. Maybe we're getting to going now. John Whitehead's having a good game offensively. Granite leads by three. We've scored the last seven points of the game. It was 31-27. They're still 31, we're 34. Bale puts up a pass. Number 15 will draw the personal foul as they tried to bring the ball into 45 Gorman. He'll go the line for a one and one opportunity. John Whitehead commits his first personal of the ball game. Gorman misses it, and Jerome Murray controls the rebound. We can, we can get a three-pointer now. It'll really look big for us. Steve 
Steve Gable down to Jerome Murray into Todd Brooks. He turns and pumps it up, and it won't go. Gorman controls the rebound. Red Butler, coast to coast. No one turned him. The boy's deceptively fast, Ronnie. It looks like he's loping along, and he's under the basket. Steve Gable with the ball, with the ball down in the corner to Justin James. Gable stops, puts it up. Jerome Murray's going to take it in, but he's rejected. John Whitehead gets the ball. Gable prevents the turnaround. Yes! Yes! Jerome Murray penetrated down the line for a layup, lays it up for two points. 36-33 ball game. 537 left in this contest. 45 Gorman picks up the loose ball. Todd Brooks sweeps the boards clean. Well, we Gable got, bringing the ball. We need down, two points right court. here. We need two. Justin's not being a threat on offense over there. He's either needing to shoot it or drive or something. Oh, oh deflected. Gable will be called for the blocking foul. Picks up his second personal of this ball game, so we're not in any trouble on fouls at this point. Jerome Murray has three. That's the most fouls of any member of our team, Ronnie. 15 will be David Dugan going to the line. Dugan he puts it up and in. He's pretty good shooter. Dugan is a good shooter, Arl. Well, he found the range. He admits his early opportunities. He puts it up and it's off. A good move by the 6'7", Sean Gorman, but it, he's denied the basket. Foul, and he's out. That will be all. That will be the fifth personal foul on Sean Gorman, so that hopefully, hopefully that will give the Panthers a little more edge on rebounding as 6'7", Sean Gorman leaves the ball game for the final time with five personal fouls. Todd Brooks will go to the line shooting two, and he makes the first one. Thirty-seven, thirty-four. Todd Brooks shooting his second one. It's off. Thirteen. Mitchell handling the ball down court for the Tigers. Twenty-four is Bell. A tie ball. Justin James and Mark Mitchell. But Hollis, Hollis will will retain possession of the ball on the on the tie ball. Number ten, Dixon, with the ball. He puts up a shot, and it's going to be off. Jerome Murray, at, I believe, forty-two. No, no, no. We get a. Yeah, there's on Justin's Number back. Number 13, 13 Mitchell. Mark Mitchell commits his second personal of this contest. That will bring Justin James to the line to shoot shoot the bonus. Shoot a one and one here. A chance to put us up by, yes. Justin James, Kansas' first opportunity, puts us up by four. Justin James. We got a five lead. That's a most converts both his free throw opportunities. It's a five point ball game with four minutes and 15 seconds left. Rhett Butler on a beautiful drive and he scores. Rhett Butler, an excellent ball player, Ronnie.
Good ball handling. Three seconds. Good ball handling by the Panthers, but they stayed in the lane too long, so the turnover gives Hollis possession of the ball, means with the ball, number 24 will be Twenty-five Gable blocking. Gable's call for blocking. He was hoping to draw the charge, but the referee right on the floor says he's blocking. Number twenty-four will go to the line. That will be Buddy Bell, and he misses. And Granite will get the ball. Inbound pass to Steve Gable. And they're getting close on time, but Gable races across the line. And yes, 20 means is called for blocking. That'll send Jerome Murray to the line. Oh, consistent, calling, consistent calling by the referees. They call it the same way on both ends this time, Ronnie. Yeah, so, we, we can pull back to five-point lead here with 3.23 to go if we can get both of these. Jerome Murray going the line for a two-shot opportunity. No, I guess it was a, uh, they call it before the shot. Granite with a three-point lead, 39-36. Rhett Butler makes a strong move. That boy is doing a job. He's wrecking Granite's defense under the goal. Steve Gable back to Justin James. Being pursued by the Hollis defense. Steve Gable stops, pumps it up, and it's no good. Yes, they call number 10. They call number 10 for moving under Todd Brooks. Number 10 commits his third personal. Todd Brooks will go the line with a chance to put Granite up by three. Todd Brooks, it's up and it's in. 40-38, two-point Granite lead. It's up and it's and it's in. Todd Brooks tonight is four for five from the free shot line. Dugan with the shot and it don't go. Steve Gable with the rebound and brings it down court, crosses the timeline, charges in. There's the ball to 42, Justin James. Reaching in, David Dugan, that will send. That's five, him. that's five on him. That's four according to my book, Ronnie. I think it's five. Well, they say it's six, so that's five. Yes, I missed one somewhere down the line. Steve Gable will go to the line. Two minutes and eight seconds, Steve Gable puts up the free shot and it's in and out, but Jerome Murray controls the rebound. Back to Jerome Murray, he puts up the shot, it won't go, but Jer Robin Carney, Todd Brooks stays with it and gets, gets the two points. We got a timeout here by Hollis. 3 to 38 with 140 to go. Timeout, Hollis Tigers with a minute 40. And number 23, Rhett Butler picks up his second personal. He will be sending Jerome Murray, number 50, to the free shot line. 
Jerome Murray has only had one opportunity at the line tonight, and he missed that opportunity. Very exciting ball game, Ronnie. It's a low scoring affair, but there's been a lot of action, and it's kind of beginning to heat up as we close in on the final moments of the game. Yeah, oh, well, I didn't know that uh, that Hollis had fouled. I thought we had fouled, and when you said that, I looked down and saw the official down on the end, so we're going to shoot, right? Sounds good to me, Ronnie. I didn't. I was marking the score in the book, and I missed it, so I didn't know what had gone on. But that. I, I thought sure. I thought sure we had fouled. Well, it's very, very unusual for uh, in that situation for the defensive team to draw the foul. Jerome Murray will go the line with a chance to put Granite up by six, and he does. Jerome Murray makes his first free throw opportunity, puts Granite up by six, 44-38. Jerome Murray still at the line, and he shoots, converts. Granite will have a seven-point lead with a minute 36 seconds left to play this ball game, but this ball game's far from over. That's a lot of time. Ten puts the ball up. It's no good. Red Butler battles and rebounds and Puts the ball up, makes the ball. Justin James battling the defensive pressure, and he brings it down court to Robin Carney. Granite handling the press. Robin Carney with the ball, and it's a bad cross court pass stolen by number 10, Alvin Dixon. A reaching in foul denies number 23. Rhett Butler, the basket, he'll go to the line after the timeout, number 50, Jerome Murray with his fourth personal, but it was a good foul. He reached in and denied, he reached in and denied Rhett Butler the basket. So after the timeout, Rhett Butler will go to the line with, I think, a two-shot opportunity, Ronnie. So oh, my microphone. I can't hear. Can you hear me now? I've got a short here someplace. I tell you what, this turnover down here. I, I, uh, go ahead and talk. All right, after the timeout, this team takes to the, the floor. There is one minute and two seconds left in this ball game. Testing, testing, one, two, three. And he misses his first opportunity. Rhett Butler at the line. He's played a very strong game for the Tigers. His second free throw will be in. And he brings the Tigers within four points. Gable with the ball. And... Number 20, Means, draws the foul. We'll send Jerome Murray back to the line. The number 20, Means, that's his third personal as this game winds into the final moment, final minute of the game. Jerome Murray at the line. The shot is up and it's off. The ball's deflected. Number 10, Alvin Dixon controls the ball. Rhett Butler puts it up and it's no good. Robin Carney with the rebound. Robin Carney playing another strong game tonight. He's only scored four points in this ball game, but he's had some great rebounds and played some great defense, Ronnie. Arlo, we sure need these free shots. We, we could nearly wrap it up with a two points here, make, it 40, make a six point lead with 47 seconds to go. Well, it's important now to get to get at least four point lead, Ronnie, because the three point play. We've missed a one and one the last two times. Oh, rolling the ball, but they didn't they didn't see it. Oh, Gable with a great defensive move. Steps in front of number 24, Buddy Bell, and draws the foul, and draws a charging foul. We got a timeout with 41 seconds to go, Orville. It's our ball, four point lead. You know, we, with 57 seconds, we had a one and one, and we missed it. 
with 40, uh, 48 seconds, I believe, we had a one and one and missed it. Those four points would have put us eight points ahead. Well, they made up for it but if, by, if, with the great defensive play by Gable to draw the charging foul and uh, returns possession of the ball to grant it. Of course, there'll be no shot. There will be no shot on an offensive foul, Ronnie. Well, there's a lot of ifs. You know, if ifs and nuts were candies, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Well, it's looking like a Merry Christmas to me because Granite's definitely in the driver's seat as we go into the final 41 seconds of this ball game. Gable handling the ball, but it's stolen away. Number 24, Buddy Bell to re over to Mitchell, but he misses the ball. Todd Brooks controls the rebound. They're all over him, and they finally, Rhett Butler, I believe, will be called for the foul. Todd Brooks did an incredible job grabbing the rebound and fighting off the defensive pressure to maintain control of the ball. Number 13 was whistled for the call for the foul. That's his third personal as we wind this ball game down to the final 27 seconds. And Todd Brooks has been good from the line tonight. He puts it up and it's no good. 23 seconds. Red Butler battles for the rebound, puts the ball up, 43-45. We've got to hit those free throws, Ronnie. They're, that's three we've missed. Hollis is being able to take the uh, rebound off the free throw, control the ball, and get back in the ball game. They've made a run. We had them down by seven, and they've made a run. They're within two points now, and it's come, Ronnie off of uh, converting the the missed free throws into baskets we've missed since 40 since 57 seconds we've missed three first of one and ones that would have been a possible six points and we still on 45. Well, with 10 seconds left we desperately need we desperately need to convert these two or this free throw opportunity into two points because ronnie with the uh, with the three-point shot, listen, this ball game can be over before you know what's happening now. And we could be the loser. And we could be the loser. Uh, last year at Hollis, a similar situation. Red Butler brought it down and pumped up a shot from three-point range. Nothing but net. And Granite went from the, from the throne room to the dungeon in an instant. And it's in. Justin James. If he can make one more, we can win this game. Justin James at the line for the Panthers converts his first opportunity. And he puts it up, and it's no good. Hollis with the rebound. And they call timeout. Eight seconds left in this ball game. I think there was a little bit of a misunderstanding there. The Hollis Tigers were ready to bring the ball down court. And they call timeout. I think the coach is a little unhappy. They had the opportunity to whip the ball down court with very little lost time and uh, give them a chance for maybe a, maybe a shot and a rejected shot, a rebound, uh, another shot. So, uh, but we'll go to timeout with eight seconds left in this ball game, Ronnie. And granted, enjoying a three-point lead, 46-43. Arvel, what we don't need to make a three-pointer and foul them on the shot. That'd be terrible. I definitely expect Rhett Butler to handle the ball as they, on the offensive end, Rhett Butler's fading off to the side three-point shot. Now he goes down to the post. And Hollis takes another timeout, eight seconds before any seconds are ticked off of the clock, there's still eight seconds in this ball game. Ronnie, this has been a good ball game. It's been slow paced, but Grand Granite, after uh, falling to four points, all by three shots in the second quarter, have uh, been able to come back and warm back up on the offensive end, make some field goals and get back in the ball game. But 
Granite has either been in the lead or at the, or tied at every quarter break of this ball game. So it's been close. It's been match points, but Granite has definitely been in this game from the from the opening tip off. Gable uh, with the defensive pressure. Red Butler putting up the three pointer and it's no good. Buddy Bell with the rebound, but he steps out of bound. Granite will get the ball with one second left on the clock. I expect them. I fully expect them to hold the ball. Gable with the ball. The ball game is over. Granite. Granite. Granite wins the best of the Southwest tournament, Ronnie. I'm. I'm excited for the team. Look at them. They're celebrating. All the fans pointed at the ball team. We're having microphone problems. We'll try to get this fixed for the next game. We're going to stay on Orville and get these individual presentations. We can go home anytime. It's just nearly midnight, isn't it? 11.15 on December the 10th, 1988. Granite Gym. Best of the Southwest Finals. The Granite Panthers are champions. Well, uh, get these trophy presentations. Orville, what was the final score? 46-43. That's what's on my mind. They've already that's, raised. That's correct, Ronnie. 46-43. Just in a minute, I'll have the uh, totals for the players. Here's Superintendent Dwight Hogg to make the presentation. Runner-up trophy, Hollis Tigers. Runner-up trophy, Coach Larry Taylor accepting it. Winning coach getting the uh, Steve Gable, Todd Brooks, Justin James, John Whitehead, Britton Gilreath, Jerome Murray, Robin Carney, John Nelson, our uh, Jimmy Christian, William Mundy, Steve Larson, and Ira Hopkins accepting individual trophies for the Granite Panthers. It feels good to have won this tournament. All right, individual. Uh, individual scoring tonight. Steve Gable, 14 points to lead the Panthers. Todd Brooks, 10 points. John Whitehead had a real good offensive game tonight. Uh, seven points. All five of those in the second half though Ronnie Jerome Murray with six Justin James with five and Robin Carney playing one of his better games four points he did a great job on the defensive and offensive boards and uh, really worked on the defense to help contain the uh, inside game from the uh, six seven Sean Gorman and, and really an excellent ball player Rhett Butler number 23 so, Ronnie, I'm through. I'm going to borrow your microphone. Mine's not working. Well, we hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope we can show this on the local cable vision. Uh, this is Ronnie James running the camera along with Orville Lockley. Orville, you did a great job tonight. Really appreciate it. We'll keep this tape forever because it might be another 18 years before we win this tournament again. It's Ronnie James signing off.